Good morning. Now that the octave of Easter is over, we will um, start in the first re reading. You'll notice will be a, a pretty much continuous reading from the Acts of the Apostles. So we're going to start reading about the first Christian community, or I should say the Christian community and how it started out. And things are starting to heat up. The, the apostles and disciples are not being persecuted yet in the sense of they're not being arrested, tortured, and killed yet. But um, <clears throat> they are starting to get resistance from the Jewish leaders. And um, notice a couple of things. So Peter and John are released. They come back to the community. And the community is praying. And they uh, notice a couple of things about their prayers. First of all, they use the Psalms in their prayers, which they'd be using, used to using, right? And, and it's something for us to keep in mind. I encourage you to use the Psalms, to pray the Psalms. Um, it, they've been called, this, the uh, Psalms have been called, the uh, Book of Psalms has been called the Church's Prayer Book, you know. And um, there's all kinds of, a, a wide range of emotions and thoughts in, in the Psalms. But they, they quote a Psalm from Psalm 2, which is the Psalm in the Responsorial Psalm today. Why do the nations rage and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up and the princes conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. So the kings and the mighty ones of the earth are rising up in rebellion. And what does God do? He who is throned in heaven laughs. The Lord derides them, right? He's laughing in scorn. And um, the apostles quote this in their prayer. I think they're starting to realize that God's plan cannot be halted. You know, maybe it can be held up a little, maybe thrown a curve, you know, or whatever. But the people of earth, no matter how powerful they are, are not going to be able to stop. God's plan. And so the apostles pray. Um, oh, oh, I got to turn back. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. The apostles don't pray that the persecution ends. They pray that they may be bold enough to continue to spread the word about Jesus. They ask to be strong enough to continue the mission they've been given. You know? It's a different mindset. You know, asking that this um, not take place or asking that they be strong enough to do their mission in spite of it, you know. And it's something to keep in mind um, as we go along. We hear some troubling things, you know, the um, Virginia governor signed that, uh, uh, I think he called it the Reproductive Health Care Protection Act or something like that. Signs it on Good Friday, among all things. Um, you're not going to convince me that was an accident, you know. He saw, <clears throat> signed another bill on Good Saturday, um, something about recognizing uh, gender changes among people or something like that. You're not going to tell me, you're not going to convince me that was an accident that he did it on Holy Saturday, you know. Michigan's governor, I don't know what she's doing. She's all uh, dead set to um, uh, destroy any of this Christianity, it seems like, you know. I mean, I don't know that for sure. I don't know in her heart, but <clears throat> her actions are sure seem uh, um, meant to impress those on the very left side of this country. Uh, 
the little sisters of the poor are back in uh, Supreme Court, I think, for like the third time, fourth time, I'm not sure. Um, whatever. These things can get us down if we let them. But we continue, and the little sisters of the poor are a great example. You know, if you hear them, they're still joyful. They're still just doing what they're doing. This is theirs. This is their fight now. That and so, um, I can imagine them praying <laughs> the same prayer. Lord, you know, not so much take it away, but give us the strength to continue um, on. And so that's what we pray. No matter what's getting in the way, you know, let us continue to pray that we, like the apostles, will just continue to do what God wants us to do, you know. And we don't have to let any of this get us down because the victory has been won. That's the message of Easter, right? We've still got some battles to fight. But the victory itself has been won. So the question is not whether somebody's going to be on the winning or losing. I mean, whether God's going to win or lose, so to speak. It's going to be whether we're staying on the winning side or whether we've given up and gone to the losing side. You know, And so um, that's it. Let's stay on the winning side. You know, <laughs> this side is going to win. There is no power on earth greater than the power of Jesus' resurrection. God bless you all.